Hi, everyone, and welcome to another installment in our Halo implementation series. Uh, with me today, again, I have my absolute favorite person at uh, at Halo, uh, Mr. Morgan Aspinall. Um, and it's good to see you again, Morgan. Um, and on today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, adding custom SQL reports uh, to the invoice template. So, you know, you may want to send your customer a report uh, with the invoice to say, you know, what's been done against that ticket uh, and, and list all of those time entries and that kind of thing. So um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, really good to see you, Morgan. Um, and, and as I always say on, on these videos, you are Mr. Halo. And I really appreciate that you've, uh, you know, given up your time again to to join me on these. So uh, thanks for thanks for being here and uh, hope, hope all is well with you. Hello again, Chris. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, always a pleasure to be here. Cool. Yeah. So this one's uh, a little bit different, I suppose. There, there are some. Um, oh, I so I, I don't really know how to describe it. We so far, um, uh, for pretty much all of these sessions, we've been following a very standard uh, implementation process, making sure that we're looking at uh, all of the fundamentals. This one is not so much a fundamental, but nonetheless a very important part of the system and quite a cool feature. Uh, it touches on a couple of uh, topics. So we'll briefly take a look at the reporting capabilities in Halo. Uh, we'll have a look at the invoice PDF, and then we'll see how we can uh, tie the two together by returning reports onto invoices themselves. Yeah. So um, the reporting, I'll start off by saying the reporting capabilities in Halo are uh, practically unlimited. Um, and what I mean by that really is uh, Halo sits on top of a SQL database, uh, and the reporting suite in Halo PSA is effectively a, a read-only window directly into that database. Uh, so in terms of what can be reported, uh, if it's in the database, we'll be able to report on it. I like to say that uh, the reporting capabilities in Halo are limited only by one's knowledge of SQL, uh, which you know is the um, is the sort of the barrier to overcome. But I will say that, uh, you know, Halo's support and consulting teams and people like Chris uh, can certainly help you guys out with uh, understanding the schema and building those reports out for you. So let's hop into the reporting suite. Now, we have about 400 reports. Uh, wow, way more now. We've got about 700 reports uh, already in the system well, already in our online repository. And so we can get there from the reporting suite, uh, wherever it is, in the reporting suite, where down here at the bottom, we have this online repository. So um, the chances are, if you're looking for a report, someone else has asked for it or something very similar, uh, at which point you'll be able to come in here, find that report, find the report that you're actually uh, interested in making use of. And then there's this button at the top here to uh, add this report to my own private library. And um, now I've actually built a, a, a very quick bespoke report out just prior to this session, just to demonstrate this specific use case we have here of adding uh, reports to invoices. Uh, and just to briefly sort of highlight the, the process of creating reports in Halo, um, if we edit our report on the left-hand side, we have some tabs of information here. Uh, the details is where we can specify the name of the report, the group that it's in. Our data source is where we're actually uh, adding the, the report information in. Now, uh, I've written out some custom SQL here, but we actually see this data source option at the top. Uh, where we can make use of a series of built-in uh, sort of high-level master reports, which we can then filter and sort and order uh, and group by uh, without the, the need to uh, know any SQL. Or we've even got this custom query builder where we can actually start uh, building out the fields and columns that we actually want to make use of uh, and also our conditions as well. So you don't need a knowledge of SQL to be able to create reports in Halo, uh, but it certainly helps. 
and, and actually, and that's true because I mean, I I don't have a huge amount of SQL server or SQL experience myself, and I I've kind of figured out a lot of a lot of where the stuff how this works. And I think you know, as long as you have a copy of the the database schema, which mm-hmm. I'm, I'll actually put a link to that in the in the description. Um, you know, and and as long as you have that, then writing these SQL queries is f- fairly straightforward. Um, and what I tend to find as well is I often look at, um, you know, look at the stuff that's there already. Um, if if I want to write my own, and then I it it, it kind of makes a lot of sense when I um, when I look at what's there already. So yeah, it's um, it's not too difficult to do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So um, yeah, this is a basic SQL report that I've written. The important part of this report is highlighted by this dollar invoice ID variable. So we can include certain variables in the SQL of our reports, which will then be interpreted elsewhere in the system. Another great example of this is using the dollar client ID variable in these reports. And what that can do, or what that will do, is uh, when a cut, if you present that report uh, on the portal, when a customer logs in to the self-service portal, they will see a report based on their own data. So you can build one report out or perhaps one dashboard out, uh, publish that on the portal globally, and then based on whoever's logging into that self-service portal, uh, will see the information that uh, is relevant to their own customer record. Now, of course, uh, here we, we're using the invoice ID variable such that uh, we only return the time entries on tickets that uh, have been worked on uh, in the time period that the invoice itself was created. So uh, once we've got our our report that we've set up, we can then add that to our invoice PDF via configuration billing general where we've got a PDF template section here. Now in here, we have this report section and we can see I've already added in the report uh, that I want to be returned on my invoice PDF pages. Uh, so when you add the that report in, it will return a, you a data variable. So for example, if I were to add these two reports in, they immediately give me back the variable that I would need to include in the HTML of our uh, invoice template, which is set up on the pages tab over here, where I have just chucked that in here. Again, I'm not going to be going into much detail on the the HTML side. Maybe we'll come back to that at a later date. But for now, uh, the important point to note is we can add reports into the configuration of our PDF templates uh, by including the associated report data variable. Yep. And then the outcome is not that at all. Fantastic. What's going on there? One, eight, six. So let's go through that again. Let's go to configuration billing general. Let's go to our invoice PDF settings. Let's go to our invoice with time breakdown. I deleted the wrong report. What I was meant to keep in here was the consumed time for period, which should be 186. And then if we go to uh, our invoice for labor, what we can see down here, and actually what I'll do is I'll generate the whole PDF. What we'll see is on the first page, we have our standard 
in <coughs> invoice details, excuse me, um, where here we would have all of the sort of recurring services, all of the hardware that's been procured, all the sales orders, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and then on this subsequent page, we have the report that has actually been uh, added into the PDF configuration. <coughs> so you can imagine um, configuring your invoices similar to similar to this where um we are grouping our invoice lines as much as possible which means that uh you know instead of if i have 50 actions across 10 tickets uh, i can group that all onto uh, one line and that will just be the total time for uh, that charge rate across all of the tickets and so that would return on here just the one single line and then below we can have a report that gives a breakdown of all of the notes that were added and um, another handy example that I've seen set up quite uh, commonly is uh, returning down here the time that hasn't actually been billed for the time that has been con being consumed by the contract, because then that allows you to justify uh, the the monthly service charge that the customer is paying. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is this is great because you know very often customers want to know this information, right? So they want yeah. to know, you know, yeah, ju justify why you you know why you're charging us x hundred or x thousand dollars pounds, whatever it is per month. Um, you know, we want to know everything you've done for us, how many tickets you've done, et cetera, et cetera. So you might want to put that on there. And then as you say, you could also even go, you know, here's a bunch of stuff that we've done that's, that's um, you know, freebies. This is where we haven't actually charged you for any of this work. We're putting that against um, against your invoice every month. So, um, and I remember back in the day of, of having my MSP business, I had a customer that insisted that this was on every single invoice before they paid. Um, most people don't care, but the, mm. you know, one particular customer was like, yeah, this has to be on every single invoice and we want to know exactly what you've done, what's free, what's included, all of that kind of stuff, um, before we, before we pay your bill. So, um, <clears throat> the downside of that is he was a very picky customer as well. So literally picked at every single thing, you know, you, did you really spend two hours on that? Did you really spend 15 minutes on that? Um, but at least we got our invoices paid every month. So, um, yeah. So yeah, very very useful way of being able to do this on um, on on the invoice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, in terms in terms of the, that sort of anecdote about the customer, I guess there's always one, isn't there? And and also in terms of the reports that you can return on here, this is a very basic example, but you could get quite creative with this and uh, return SLA stats for the tickets that have been invoiced for the month. You know, we've we've hit 90% SLA on all of these tickets that we've billed you for um, a breakdown of, of uh, category trends, anything like that, really, you can um, incorporate that into the SQL reports and uh, then, yeah, return that back onto the, onto the page. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, I definitely think, you know, as you say, the, the possibilities are endless with, with the reporting in, in Halo um, mm -hmm. and just with a few, you know, writing a few SQL scripts and getting the stuff onto the invoice, there's so much stuff you can do um, uh, around here. So it's almost like, you know, sending that customer a report of everything you've done for them on a um, on a monthly basis and just including that as part of the, the invoice rather than sending them a separate report. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that's really cool. And what I'll do is um, the that SQL script that you, you wrote, um, I'll actually get you to send me that and I will put that into the um the description below as well just if somebody wants to copy that script directly um and and do the same kind of thing um and then equally I'll also put a a list in the description below of where to get hold of a document that kind of goes through the entire schema so that if you guys want to start to to build your own reports um and looking at the schema then um then you'll be able to do that fairly easily absolutely so, yeah, absolutely. And thank you. Thanks for that, Morgan. I know this has come up a, a few times um, and I know there's going to be a lot of people watching this that are going to, um, you know, really, really love how we do this. So thank you once again. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you for your time and thank you.
always, as always, to Halo for allowing us to do these and allowing us to use your time. So really appreciate it. And thank you very much. And we will see you on the next video. Thanks again. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And uh, see you on the next one. See you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.